Audio recording devices have been around for well over a century now, and some pretty horrifying things have been captured as audio files and tapes. Here's a list of the top 5 most disturbing audio recordings, along with their backstories. Keep in mind that this list is in no particular order. Some material may be deemed inappropriate or too disturbing for some, so don't say I didn't warn you and viewer discretion is advised. Number 5. The Night Stalker Voicemail the original Night Stalker was a rapist and serial killer active on the East Coast from 1978 to 1986. During this span, the unidentified killer raped over 12 women and murdered over 50. This sick killer has gone by many names, such as the East Area Rapist, the Diamond Knot Killer, and more recently the Golden State Killer. One name he hasn't ever gone by, though, is his real name. That's because he was never apprehended. Though his crimes have allegedly stopped, he still could be out there in the world, killing and covering it up. In 2013, forces pushed to have the reward for his capture increased to $50,000. Despite this whopping reward, no tips have been sent in about the Night Stalker, and he's considered still to be at large. This audio recording comes from one of the victim's voicemail machines. He breathes deeply into the receiver and whispers, I'm going to kill you, bitch, over and over as the machine records. It's clear that he's trying to hide his true voice, probably from fear of being identified. In the background of this voicemail, other voices can be heard, implying it was sent from a public place, again, likely to prevent the number from being traced directly to him. It's uncertain why he felt the need to send this voicemail. Serial rapists and killers often return to the scene of the crime to reminisce on their sick acts. Since his victim survived in this case, this was likely as close as he could get. Number 4. A Castrato In the case of the haunting Castrato's voice, the backstory is a little more unsettling. A Castrato was the title given to a male singer that was castrated before puberty to preserve their voice in that state, whether they be a soprano or alto. Castration causes puberty to cease, and hormones that would cause the young male's voice to deepen are never released. These Castrato boys never fully grow into men and often face medical problems associated with that. It was said that many castrados died from complications related to never fully maturing, such as hormonal defects and organ failure. The act of castration for creating the high-pitched castrado voice greatly decreased throughout the 1800s and was finally made illegal in 1903. This recording is from famous castrado performer Alessandro Moreschi. As you can tell from this recording, he does sound very much like a little boy or young woman, despite being a grown man. In most cases, young boys were forced into castration by parents, choir instructors, or even priests that noticed their vocal talent from a young age. But it was not entirely unheard of for a boy to make the choice on his own if they had enough passion for music. As if the background doesn't make the audio unsettling enough, the song itself seems to have a solemn tone that increases how eerie the act of creating castrados really was. Manhood stolen from a child too young to understand the consequence. And it doesn't help to think that everyone that may have been around during this recording is long gone by now. Number 3. Jonestown Mass Suicide This small town-like land was more formally known as the People's Temple Agricultural Project, led by the cult-like religious group founded by Jim Jones. On November 18, 1978, Jim Jones and other leaders within the group convinced over 918 people to participate in a mass suicide. Men, women, and children all committed what has been referred to as a revolutionary suicide. This form of suicide had been planned by the temple for several months and was allegedly a way to go down in history while protesting capitalism and supporting socialism. This mass suicide was carried about via poison that the members ingested and also fed to their children. 
This eerie recording from November 18, 1978 displays children crying in pain as the poison begins to take hold and their loved ones drop dead around them. 1200 people's lives in my hands and I certainly don't want your life in my hand, but I'm going to tell you, Christine, without me, life has no meaning. I'm the best friend you'll ever have. Let's get calm, let's get calm. To us, we had nothing we could do. We can't, we can't separate ourselves from our own people. Number two, Operation Wandering Soul. During the Vietnam War, there were several American tactics that could be seen as cruel and unusual. Operation Wandering Soul, also known as the U.S. Ghost Recordings, was probably one of the more disturbing of the American tactics against Vietnamese soldiers. The recordings were a psychological weapon often used to get forces to retreat or surrender. The recordings were of Vietnamese peoples, mostly women and children, crying into the forest as if they were looking for their family or gravesite. This gave the impression that these souls had not been given a proper burial. As the afterlife is very important in Vietnamese culture, these recordings would make men fear losing their lives and becoming one of the alleged lost souls featured in the audio playing over huge speaker systems at U.S. base camps. Apparently, these recordings were successful a significant majority of the time. In fact, they worked so well that they were not allowed to be played around southern Vietnamese soldiers on the American side because they would fall for it as well and not want to fight alongside Americans. Number 1. The Real Exorcism of Annalise Mitchell This young girl from Germany was allegedly possessed around the age of 23. She underwent a Catholic exorcism conducted by a priest which her parents approved of. A year after her supposed possession began, she died from malnutrition and dehydration. The trouble all began when Annalise had an epileptic seizure at the age of 16 and was diagnosed with temporal lobe epilepsy a condition that can often lead to psychiatric issues. She was later diagnosed as severely depressed and sought treatment at a psychiatric hospital. As time went on, her condition worsened and she would react violently to religious objects, claim to hear the voice of the devil, and fell into suicidal emotions. Her family convinced themselves that she was possessed by numerous demons and they contacted their local Catholic church. Two priests, with the approval of their bishop, treated Annalise and performed exorcism rituals on her for 10 long months. After her death, her family, as well as the two priests, were found guilty of negligent homicide and served roughly six months in jail. This case became notorious for a textbook example of misidentified mental disorders, negligence, abuse, and religious hysteria. Many people, to this day, still believe that Annalise was actually possessed and this audio recording is a major point of evidence for those believers. Despite what you believe, this young girl should have been given proper care. Possessed or mentally ill, she was still a person and she lost her life at the hands of a family that would rather hide the truth than seek proper care. <laughs> Thank you.